So let's dive into it. San Diego State 33, Utah 31 in overtime. First off, let's jump on the uh, on the Utah side. Cam Rising needs to be the the starter for this team. Like the offense did not get going until well, he think, jumped. Into I think the we're game. good with that, right? I think everybody knows that, and I think it's going to happen. Correct? Yes, yeah. I mean, he, nineteen out of thirty-two, one hundred fifty-three yards, three touchdowns last night. Charlie Brewer could do nothing. Fourteen out of twenty-six, one hundred four yards, and one pick. So yeah, yeah, they could not run the football on San Diego State. Thirty-one carries for seventy yards. This they their lines ain't great, ain't great. San Diego State forty-five carries, two hundred and four yards rushing at four point five a clip with two touchdowns and. Lucas Johnson, the San Diego State quarterback, 10 out of 19 for 44 yards and one touchdown. They didn't have to throw the ball. They, they, they manhandled Utah. Like, this was absurd. Hang on. This is a defensive front that I thought was really good, and I just thought BYU was stronger and better and played with a little more passion and aggression. If you're getting pushed around by San Diego State, who I think is good, I'm not knocking San Diego State, but if you're getting pushed around, the athletes for San Diego State aren't close to the athletes for Oregon or, or, or hell, even USC or UCLA. If that offensive line is pushing your defensive front seven around, that they're, everybody in the Pac-12 is going to run the football on you. Everybody. Yes. Post-game win expectancy, and this game went to overtime, remember? San Diego yep. State, 92%. 92%. I I had this game on, and I was watching it, and I kept thinking, there is no reason this game should be it, this close. It shouldn't be in overtime. It shouldn't be like they, I don't I don't even know how Utah is is in this position right now because you, I, you get a you get a home dog that's a little bitty school that nobody gives a shit about or ever thinks about at home in overtime. Give me the home team every time, every. Yes time it it was it was remarkable to say the least so i yes give me san diego gave State. this game out me, as an underdog special in my in my uh saturday morning like closing line show for sbr one of i didn't i didn't give but two of them right this week of the, of all the ones i gave out but i gave out michigan state and i thought it was gonna be a perfect day because hell the first one hit and I gave out San Diego State. I hit the first one, hit the last one. Missed all the rest in between. Uh, Larry jumped in. He said he's very disappointed with the line on both sides. Yes, the offensive line uh, well, cannot yeah, block. They should be. And and the defensive line cannot get a stop. Who do you put this on? Okay? Because I know you're a fan of this team. I know you're a fan of this coaching staff. Who do you put this on for this front seven and this offensive line, the front five, to be this bad and getting pushed around two weeks in a row, bullied by teams that are smaller than them? I mean, this is I mean, it. Just goes right to the top. It's just Kyle Whittingham. Like it's it, he's he, a really good coach, right? Like yes. he didn't just forget how to do this, right? Or do you think there's some just? Is this a thing where I've been here too long and these just kids aren't listening to me anymore? And it's just fresh no, time, fresh. You you get fresh kids in all the time and whatnot. But I, I do wonder about you know it, it, different oh, teams have he handled. Been he's been there like twenty years. He's he's the guy that replaced Urban. Like yeah, that's what I'm about to say, but. I know that you get fresh kids every time. There's a reason no coach lasts more than 10 years at a school. Agreed. Because at some point in time, something needs to change, even though the kids keep coming in. I don't, I don't know what that is. But I mean, this, there's a this reason team, no coach lasts more than 10 years. This team was uh, a win over Oregon away from making the playoff just two years ago. Yeah. And and they got demolished in that game. I was about to say, and I think they would have gotten demolished in the playoffs. I, I think they had kind of a weird – Season, good season, great season for them. But I think that was a little bit of a fraudulent team when they played somebody good. They finally got their ass kicked. Yeah, Tyler Huntley now the uh, what the backup for the Ravens is that right? I think so. So yeah. and he was the quarterback for that team, and they you know they had a good running attack. They had all kind of stuff going on. So I uh, I don't know what is going on with Utah. Uh, Charlie Brewer, it, like it, I don't put the blame on him because they figured out the quarterback position. They just their defense can't get stops, and I've never seen that under Whittingham. Like he. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need Brown ready to to retract his statement. Uh, Oregon is look at the Pac-12 and thinking the second team behind them is Stanford and they aren't good. I don't know that I disagree with that. Who? That's your no, you're you're insane. You're who, insane. Who's the UCLA second best team in the Pac-12? Who? Who? Who's, UCLA. UCLA. UCLA is still the second best team in the. Still, still not close either. Not close. Even after they get beat at home by Fresno. That's right. That's okay. Right. You can lose the game. You can lose the game. Stanford didn't score against Kansas State. Agreed. I, 
I look at that differently. They had a different quarterback. I, I don't give a shit. Okay. We, we will not continue. good at football. Hey, this is the wonderful thing about it. We're only in week three. We get to watch how it plays out, right? <laughs> there was a bad football team. They beat up on whatever the hell happened at USC. And then they go into Nashville and they beat up maybe 125th out of 130 college football teams at Vanderbilt. And now we're going to claim them as the second best team in the back 12. Give me a goddamn break. <laughs> Larry Pilgrim, uh, Pilgrim said the youth is showing for Utah this year. It, no, this is supposed to be an experienced line at this point. Like I would it, say they're an experienced team, right? Yeah, when he said that, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Did they return a shitload of guys? Yes. Yes. Casey said Fresno is really good. And then Casey talked Fresno's about, really good. Loose, yeah. That loss is not going to look bad at the end of the year. No, I think I think you're I think you're right. Uh Brian Eater said so Fresno State is better than 10 Pac 12 teams. <laughs> yes. And, yes. It's very yeah, possible. Okay. Now that that I'll give you. All that right. is a true statement. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.